Oh, great. Hey, Nashville is in the house. If you want to tell me where you're from as well, that would be great in the chat box. Oh, Fort Myers, I see that. Wisconsin, there you go. Medina, Ohio, great. Hey there, Jackie Weir, perfect. Arizona, love it. I bet it's a little warmer there than what it is here. St. Paul, Dallas, great. Columbus, my friends in Columbus, all right. Hey, we're going to go ahead and get started, and uh, I hope that you all have had an amazing day. What a great opportunity that this has been to join your moms and dads at work, and I hope you've had a great time. Well, let me introduce myself to you. Uh, my name is Kevin, uh, and I grew up in a really, really small town in Kansas. Now, let me tell you where Kansas is. Kansas is right smack dab in the middle of America. I mean, right in the middle. And we're known for wheat farming, and we're known for wide open spaces, and we're known for really friendly people. Well, I, I live in Kansas City now, and I, I don't know if you all remember, but just a couple of months ago, the Kansas City Chiefs won the Super Bowl. Oh, oh my gosh. It was the first time that they had won the Super Bowl in 50 years. 50 years. The last time they won it, I was four years old. And they came from behind to win it. How cool is that? Now, that has nothing to do with what I want to talk with you about today, but I'm a really big football fan, and I didn't want to pass up this opportunity to tell you about my Kansas City Chiefs. All right, so I didn't really want to talk with you about football, but I do want to talk with you about life lessons from sidewalk art. Now, during this time, uh, I'm getting a lot more exercise. I, I hope you all are as well. I'm walking around in my neighborhood. I'm riding my bike. Uh, and I'm not alone. And our parks and walking paths uh, have a lot more people on them. And they're getting a lot, people are getting out of the house. They're getting some exercise. They're getting some fresh air. They're getting some sunshine. And, and maybe even waving at a passing neighbor from at least six feet away. And what I've noticed, though, is that some kiddos and some adults have started doing some really cool sidewalk chalk art. Uh, how many of you have done that? If you can put in the chat box how many of you have done it, if you've made some sidewalk chalk art or if you've seen some, that would be great. So, oh, there are quite a few of you. Great. Oh, that's great. Well, this artwork is really, really creative. And sometimes it has, it's fun, but sometimes it's also inspiring and encouraging to their neighbors during these tough times. And so what I'm going to share with you today are five lessons, five lessons from sidewalk art. All right. First, I want to show you a video. And this is a friend of mine, a little guy named Ryder. And his mom uh, made a very, very cool ob sidewalk chalk obstacle course. And I don't know if it's, uh, if it's playing or not. It doesn't look like it's playing yet. Oh, there it is. Uh, sidewalk chalk obstacle course. Uh, and I wish I, he was in my neighborhood as well. Oh, look at him right there. He's doing jumping jacks. Really great job. And so uh, but if I wish he was in my neighborhood, because this looks really cool, and I could be able to, to participate with this then too. What I'm learning from Ryder, who is doing his uh, ABCs and jumping along the ABCs, is to make life fun. I mean, this guy knows how to make life fun, doesn't it? Doesn't he? Uh, so when, while there are serious things that happen, I encourage you not to take life too seriously and remember to have fun. And just watch Ryder. I mean, look at him. This is practically like American Ninja Warrior right there. Look at him. Look at his squats too. I mean, he could teach me a few things about how to do squats correctly. And this is great. Look at that. Oh yeah, he's loving that. He's getting some fresh air. He's getting some exercise. I bet he did this several times. Now, this is what would be really hard for me is these frog jumps, but I could do that. Certainly need to do that. And it does a hopscotch at the end. I love this. And I want you to notice the smile on his face at the end of that. I, I mean, I, I, it makes me smile to be able to see Ryder um, and, uh, and, and what he's been able to do with this. So uh, thank you so much. So uh, what I love about this is that Ryder is making life fun. So the first life lesson is make life fun. So who wants to go out and uh, to uh, make an obstacle course uh, as well out of sidewalk chalk? I know I do. All right, the next lesson. 
uh, came from two designs that really inspired me. Uh, the first one says, one smile makes lots of smiles. So go on and smile. And, and the second one says, be the light. And you know, challenging times can be kind of tough on people, can't they? Yeah, they're tough on all of us. But during difficult times, we can be a positive influence for our friends, our family, and maybe even strangers. So let me give you an example of this. So last week, you know, I was working from home and I hear my wife doing something in the kitchen. And I think that she may be cooking something. Maybe it's dinner and then I smell something and I smell chocolate chip cookies. One of my favorite things ever. Who loves chocolate chip cookies? Okay, I bet you all do. I can, oh, raising, people are raising their hands right now. People are in the chat box, yeah. Uh, so I, I thought that she may be making them for me and for our, our sons and for our family. Um, so I went in there, I kind of snagged a cookie and uh, was really liking that. Maybe ate a little bit of cookie dough as well. Um, uh, and, and then she kind of looked at me and she said, actually, I'm making those for the nurses and the house, housekeeping staff at our neighborhood hospital. You see, one of our friends is the head doctor for the emergency department at our local hospital. And we were talking with him recently and he shared how this is a tough time. And so my wife said, how could I be the light? Like it says there, how could I be the light for others? So she made these little bags of cookies. I'm gonna show you one of them that she made. So she made these little bags of cookies, really cool. And uh, then she gave them a little note that says thank you and a little heart on it. She gave them to our doctor friend and then he gave them to all the workers in, the, uh, in his hospital. You know, she got a really nice message back and saying how that really encouraged them and that they really appreciated that. I love that. You know, she was the light for those people working at the hospital. So, you know, do we all need to make cookies? No, but that's a really great way of doing it then too. But sometimes there are other great ways of smiling to others virtually. So let me talk a couple of, uh, give, give you a couple of ideas. Maybe it's calling your grandparents and talking with them, or maybe it's drawing a picture and writing a short note to maybe an elderly person that doesn't have very many visitors right now in your neighborhood. Or maybe it's helping out your mom and dad by cleaning up after dinner. That's a good idea. Or maybe it's baking cookies. Um, you know, cookies are always a great way to bring a smile to others. So remember, one smile can make the difference to a lot of people. And it may be the only smile that they see today, but from six feet away. So the second lesson that I have for you is when you can be anything, be kind. All right. Now the next life, life lesson has two examples from the sidewalk. And you know, when sometimes when you're not with your friends and you're not going to school and you don't see your teachers or your coaches, or your friends, and even if you have a Zoom play date every now and then, it's just not the same, right? I mean, it's, it's kind of lonely. And so the two things that we have here are hashtag in this together and you're going to be okay. So sometimes we face tough things, but you know, we're going to make it through this. And you have parents who love you and you have friends who care for you and you have the police and the paramedics and the doctors and the nurses to keep us safe and healthy. There's a lot of people there to help us through this. And so while it may feel lonely, you're really not alone. And, and, and we're gonna come out of this stronger than before. So the life lesson that I've learned from these two things is you're stronger than you think you are. So remember that. You're stronger than you think you are. All right. The next lesson is one of my favorite ones then too. It has to deal with gratitude. And this is probably one of my favorite life lessons then too that I've learned from this. And you can read on here, there's always something to be thankful for. So when we have challenges in life, it's easy to get negative and to only focus on the negative things. I can't go to school. I can't play with my friends. I'm in, in the house all day you know, all these different things that you can kind of get negative sometimes. So I'll tell you what I try to do when that happens to me, and it does happen to me sometimes. Every morning, I try to start my day by thinking of the things that I'm thankful for. My wife that I just talked about, and our three sons, I'm really thankful for them. They're great guys. And my health, and my friends, and my faith, and even my 84-year-old mom, who I call every day to check on her, 
and the fact that it's getting warmer and I can uh, sit outside some and I can ride my bike. And even I'm thankful that the Chiefs won the Super Bowl. Yeah, I brought that up again. Yeah, if I was, um, if I think about the good things first in the morning, it really shapes the way that I take on the day. So um, yeah, I was talking with a friend about this and um, she shared with me that her kiddos at their school are focusing on having an attitude of gratitude and creating attitude journals. An attitude journal, how cool is that? If we all were a little bit more thankful and grateful and we showed it, that could be a real game changer for others. And so I encourage you to be thinking about how you can be thankful and what you're thankful and grateful for. So this next life lesson is be grateful always. All right. The last life lesson is a really good one, is a really good one. And it comes all the way from Walt Disney. And he's the guy that created Disney World and Disneyland and all the Disney movies that we all love, especially right now when we can, you know, having to spend a little bit more time at home and we're watching all the Disney movies. So it's got to be a good one, right? Well, one of his famous quotes, you can see it here on the screen, is if you can dream it, you can do it. That's pretty cool, isn't it? You know, right now, we have a lot more time on our hands, right? Uh, we aren't hanging out with friends. We don't have soccer practice after school. You know, we have a lot more time. So we can maybe think about the big goals that we have and maybe that we want to accomplish. So maybe your goal is, let me give you some examples. Maybe your goal is to be a better basketball player. So you could say, I'm going to shoot 100 free throws a day during this time. And if I would have shot 100 free throws during, uh, at, at, when I was young, I would be a much better basketball player. Um, and maybe it's your goal is to learn Spanish. And I know we today, we've already learned uh, some folks that were teaching us some foreign languages as well. And so this is your time to do it. Maybe your goal is, I want to be a better student. And so uh, you can change your study habits right now. Maybe your goal is to be a better friend to someone who may need it. And so now's your time to start. Maybe your goal is to learn to ride a bike. I've heard three kids uh, in just in my circle of friends who have learned to ride a bike already this time. And so that's a great goal. And so you've got a lot of time on your hands right now. And so let's commit not to waste it. But here's the thing that I really wanna think push on you is don't think too small. Right now, you have the time, like Walt Disney does, to dream big, right? And so the fifth life lesson, and the last one, is set goals and dream big. So there you go, the five life lessons. And let's look at them again, then too. Make life fun. When you can fit, be anything, be kind. You're stronger than you think you are. Be grateful always and set goals and dream big. So let me go to in conclusion, and I'm gonna conclude now for y'all, but I wanna show you a couple things then too. See the heart and torch in this picture? This was drawn by a survivor uh, of heart disease. And uh, I show you this because your moms and dads who work for the American Heart Association are doing really important work. So I encourage you to tell them thank you because they're, they're making a big impact. So in conclusion, as I walk in the park or in my neighborhood, I'm really inspired by my neighbors and I'm learning a lot more about how to be positive and safe and kind, uh, thankful, strong, fun, and grateful. So I encourage you to take a walk, make some sidewalk art, and be the inspiration for someone else. And to maybe take a picture of your sidewalk art and tag it to hashtag kids at AHA. I'd love to see it. So thanks for listening and thanks for joining today. And remember, just like the sidewalk art says, you are amazing. So thanks very much for being here. Bye-bye. I appreciate you all. We'll see you later. Thanks very much.